Here we are in the soil pit of the second growth forest regeneration site and we're going to be talking about the horizons and the litter layer. Well the first thing to do is to distinguish between what is the forest floor and the litter layer and that of the mineral soil. So the, the forest floor is comprised of organic material and it comes from the trees and whatever leaf litter or um, uh, stems or large woody debris that falls on the floor eventually decomposes and becomes part of the forest floor. Which is separate from the mineral soil which is down here which results from weathering of parent material and there's a whole host of, of soil processes that go on within both the mineral soil and the forest floor. So the forest floor is comprised of the three layers. Uppermost is the L layer or litter layer and this litter layer is comprised of recently fallen needles and twigs, uh, little cones for example. This is a hemlock cone. Um, there's uh, larger pieces of wood but we can tell what they were. There's even moss here and herbs and so on. So um, we can tell what it was, it's not that well decomposed, and so the fungi, and you can actually see a little strand, hyphal strand of a decomposing fungus right here, the fungi, the bacteria, and the arthropods start to break it down. So they're decomposing that fresh litter into a, a more um, amorphous type material. Well, it's not totally amorphous, we can almost tell what it was. Um, but much finer particles because they've basically digested these larger materials. Okay. Um, once it's been decomposed in the F horizon, um, we go through more and more stages of decomposition until we get to the, to the H horizon, which is the most highly decomposed yet still organic material. So it's very black. It's basically the, the products um, of decomposition, the excrement that's come out of the bodies of the, of the bacteria and fungi and so, so on. We can't tell at all what this was. This is completely amorphous and it's very black because there's a lot of humic acids and fulvic acids in, still in this humus layer. So Suzanne, I took this from the, the H layer, but it doesn't really look like humus to me. Can you talk about what that is there? Sure. This is, I mean, it's the same color as humus, it's black, mm -hmm. but it's not decomposed, right? It's woody material and this is actually charcoal. And this is evidence from the last fire, that there was a fire here. So we often do see charcoal in the forest floor. And dendrochronologists will look for that to rebuild fire history in a stand. So we talked about the forest floor. Let's talk about the mineral layers. Okay. Well, underneath the forest floor, which, you know, as I described before, it goes from the litter layer down to the bottom of the humus form, or the, sorry, the humus layer, um, right underneath that is where the mineral horizon starts and that's the, this is this whitish layer that you can see running right underneath. So just a, a couple of, one interesting thing is look at how irregular the, the boundary is, you know, the, and, and how variable the thickness of the forest floor is. Here it's maybe five centimeters thick and over here it's almost 20 centimeters thick. And that comes from just variation in how litter falls, whether there was a rotten log or, a, or, or, a, or some uh, roots coming through, um, those all play a role in the pattern of, of the forest floor depth. Okay, so what distinguishes between the forest floor and the mineral soil? Well, it's really based on whether or not there's mineral uh, content within, within the material itself. So I can pick up a little piece of, of, at the interface, and I'll pick up a little piece from the H horizon here, and then there's a little bit from the A, E, A, E horizon underneath. Okay, so here's the, the H horizon and I can rub it between my fingers and if it was just pure humus material then I would feel no mineral particles in it whatsoever. It would just be this greasy, um, slippery material and that's basically what I feel here. So this is definite, this black stuff is, is humus or H layer. This is the AE and when I rub it between my fingers I can feel minerals between it. There's particles that are more than two millimeters in diameter. And so I know that that's mineral material. If you have a hard time, um, sometimes it's not so easy to distinguish that there's a gradation between the H and the AE or the A horizon. And you can even put a bit of it in your mouth and, and bite on it and see if there's grit. And if there's some grit, then you can say, okay, it's predominantly grit, so I'm gonna call that mineral horizon. Right underneath the forest floor where the humus ends, we, we see the AE horizon. Okay, so 
this AE horizon has actually got quite a bit of dark material in it. And the darkness comes from the humus leaching uh, from the upper layer down into the mineral soil. So when it rains, it picks up some of that decomposed uh, humus uh, material and brings with it and deposits it here in the A horizon. But all that leaching continues on, the water continues to move through the profile and it, there's, uh, it picks up a lot of the humus and carries it into further layers below. Um, there can also be a little bit of oxidation of iron and aluminum and that oxidized material also gets washed down into the B horizon along with silica. And it, this results in a bleaching of this A E horizon. So, um, or, or we call it eluviation. So that material, the organic matter, the iron and aluminum and the silica are eluviated out of the A E horizon and deposited in the B horizon right below. Okay, that de deposition in the B horizon we call eluviation. But the eluviation, the eluviation in the AE is what AE stands for. It's the A horizon that's eluviated. This particular AE is very thin. Sometimes they can be very thick. They can be several centimeters thick under a well podzolized system. Um, but this one is very thin, and there's a lot of H material, humus incorporated into it. So some could argue that this is actually an AHE horizon. It's not just eluviated. It's got humus in it as well. Okay, so we have, I would call this an AHE, and it's very thin and, and discontinuous almost. Okay, underneath you can see there's a more red material. This is the B horizon, or an upper B horizon. Podzolization occurs when, when rainwater uh, percolates through the soil profile, picks up iron, aluminum, and humus, and deposits it down into this B horizon. Um, and it becomes oxidized and that's what gives it that red color. So th these are, what this is reflecting is the iron oxides and there's also aluminum oxides in there as well. So it's a podzolic B horizon. There's different kinds of podzolic Bs. There's the BF horizon which are dominated by, um, by iron. There's BH, podzo podzolic BH horizons where there's a lot of organic matter in the, in the B horizon and then there's something in between called a BHF or BFH. This is probably a BF just based on its color. Suzanne, can you elaborate about those two spots right there? There's a whitish, uh, kind of creamy colored, and then a blackish spot. Yeah, I mean, when you see things like that, you really do need to be a bit of an, a detective. So um, there are a couple of possibilities. It could be that there was a root growing through here, and during the fire, it, it started to burn, and it, all that remains is the charcoal from that root. So what, what we could be seeing is a cross section of a root uh, that would have come through the soil. Um, on the other hand, because this is a buried AE, there could have been a large piece of wood that was uh, that was burning on the surface, and then it got buried right away by a a tip-up mound from the from the tree and then it was just preserved much longer than the other coarse woody burn material on the surface. So but but and nevertheless this is burned out wood, how it got there, whether it's a root or a piece of burning slash, who knows. This piece of material, this is a really coarse uh, weathered rock and so I think that probably, I'm not sure what happened here, but it could be that 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 rock was exposed and just weathered more rapidly than the other rocks in the soil profile. So Suzanne, I see two things as we move further down into the pit. One, the roots get a lot larger and then also the color gets lighter. Um, perhaps you could expand upon those two things. Okay, you're right Rachel. Most of the fine roots are contained in the upper horizons and that's where most of the soil nutrients are contained. So the trees are going to put their resources to pick up those nutrients there. So you can see all these fine roots in the, in the H and the, and the F horizons of the forest floor. As you move down through the profile, there's fewer and fewer nutrients available. And so most of these larger roots at lo lower depths are there for structure. And they're what are holding the trees up. And they can be massive like this one. So you can imagine that these trees, they're very big, they're very heavy, and they move during the wind. And so these roots are what are there to anchor them to the soil. Let's talk about the sea horizon. Okay, so you can see down here where the bee has gotten very red, it's very oxidized, and right underneath it, there's a very light grayish horizon. Well, we're right at the top of the sea horizon down there. The sea horizon is basically the parent material. So that's the material that 
here got laid down by the last glaci glaciation. There's a very little bit of soil development going down there because you can see some of the red in it. Um, so we would classify that as a BC, but not that far down we'll find sea horizon. Given all that you've heard about the soil quality and the different soil properties, as well as the vegetation on this site, it's up to you now to conclude whether this is a productive soil or if this site is productive or not. And also for you to think about what type of management choices would you want to make for this environment?